What's up, Cal Gang? All right, so we got this uh, this moment problem here. So it's three parts to it. So first, it wants us to find the resultant force. It wants us to find the angle of the resultant force. And then it wants us to find the moment around A. So I went ahead and uh, made a little diagram here for our forces. And let's just go ahead and solve it, right? So part A, right? It wants us to find the resultant force. So a tip, uh, if you guys want to do this uh, questions kind of like in a good, like methodical way, I recommend go ahead and writing each one of these as a vector already. So force one, let's go ahead and write that as a vector. Right, so what's it gonna be, right? So it's going x direction first. Let's see what the x direction. So the x is going negative, and then there's this ratio of four to five here in the x ratio to the hypotenuse. So we're gonna take that hypotenuse 120, and then we're gonna make sure the negative is there, and then we're gonna multiply by four fifths. And this is it in the x direction. And it's also going negative in the y direction, so it's going to be negative 120, and then it's uh, y to hypotenuse is 3 over 5. Okay. So that's force 1 written as a vector, so let's go ahead and do that for force 2 as well. So force 2. Well, force 2 is just acting in the x direction, right? It just goes 60 in the x and 0 in the y. Nice. So force 3. Let's think about this one. So this is going positive in the x direction, so it's going to be positive 180. And then its ratio is it goes 3 over the x for every 5 hypotenuse. So you're going to multiply 3 by 5. 3 over 5. Then it's going negative to the x, so negative 180. And then its ratio is 4 to 5. 4 to 5. There we go. So these are our three uh, forces written as vectors. So now if we want to find the resultant force. All we have to do is take the sum of the forces in the x and the sum of the forces in the y. Right? So those are some of the forces in the x, right? Well, let's just go ahead and add up all the x's. So it's going to be negative 120, 4 over 5, plus 60, plus 180, 3 over 5. And then if you go ahead and do that, it's just going to be uh, 72 pounds. Nice. So some of the forces in the y direction now. So let's add those up. So it's going to be negative 120, 3 over 5, uh, 0, so plus 0, I guess. And then minus 180, 4 over 5. And this is going to give you negative 216. Okay. I think there's an, I probably wrote something else. I can't even read my handwriting. But 216, I think it's pounds. Oh, I wrote pounds. I just can't read my own handwriting today. All right, nice. So then, if we're trying to find the resultant force, we're just going to take the magnitude of the x and the y. So force resultant is equal to the square root of 72 squared plus negative 1 or negative 2 16 squared. And then that's going to be 228 pounds. Nice. Cool. So we found part A. So let me put this down somewhere. I guess I'll be real. Or maybe over here. Raise this, and now let's find the direction, right? So we are what vector is our resultant force in, right? So it goes positive in the x but negative in the y. So it's going to go this way. It's going to be in quadrant four, which means that there's going to be a negative angle, but it's going to be less than 90 degrees. So of course we're going to take tangent, right? So tangent of theta. This theta is the angle we're trying to find. So tangent is opposite over adjacent. So if we're looking at the x direction from this direction, we're trying to find this angle here. We're going to take opposite, which is going to be y, so negative 2, 1, 6, over adjacent, which is going to be x, so 72. So then if we take the inverse tangent, negative 2, 1, 6, over 72, we're going to get that theta is equal to negative 71.6 degrees. Nice. So that means it points downward 76 degrees is where the resulting force is. Negative 71.6 degrees. Nice. So then part C wants us to find the uh, moment, right? So let's go ahead and find moment. So we can go ahead and get rid of this now. So let's do moment. So 
how do you do moment, right? Well, what's the equation for this? So in two dimensions, if we're finding the moment around A, we're going to take force in the x direction and then multiply it by distance in the y direction, and then we're going to add that to force in the y direction and distance in the x direction, right? So we have the force x, force y, we found those, this is x, this is y, and then we just need to find the distances for each one and add them all together. So let's start with force one. So I'm going to use this. So moment around A, right? So it's going to be for, uh, force in the x, so negative 120, 4 over 5, and then distance in the y direction. So it goes 6 feet across, but that's not what we're worried about. It only goes one foot up, so we're going to multiply that by 1. Right. But we have to think about direction, right? What direction is this force going to make it move? If it's going to make us move counterclockwise, then we're going to add it. If it makes us move clockwise, then we're going to subtract it. So if we're looking at just the force in the x direction, if we push here, it's going to want to rotate counterclockwise. You see what I mean? If we're just pushing in the x direction here, it's going to go counterclockwise. So this is actually going to be a positive number. All right, so let's think about the y. So if we look at the y, imagine we're just pushing down right up here. If we push down here, it's obviously going to make us want to go clockwise. If we push down up there. So this is going to be subtracted. So we're going to subtract the force in the y direction, so 120, 3 fifths. And then uh, it's distance in the x direction. So it's distance is 3 foot with 3 foot. So we're going to multiply that by 6. Nice. So let's go on to force 2. So force 2, let's think about this. So if we're adding force in the x direction, so it's going to be force in the x direction is 60, but it's distance in the y direction, it doesn't go anywhere in the distance in the y direction, so it's going to be 0. So that's going to get dropped. So then let's think about it for force in the y direction. So there's no force in the y direction, so that's going to be 0 times 6. So this force doesn't do anything to the moment, so we don't have to worry about it. So let's go into force 3, right? So let's think about the x direction. So if we're pulling, uh, in the x direction from here, but which way is it going to make us turn? Well, let's do the equation. So let's start with 180, 3 fifths, and then distance in the y direction. So this is force in the x, so what's distance in the y? Well, it's pulling from here, so it's distance in the y is 0 again. So this is also going to get dropped. So then let's just look at uh, force in the y. So it's force in the y, it's pulling this way. So this is going to make us want to go clockwise, so we're going to have to subtract this, right? So then it's going to be negative 180, 4 fifths. And then we're going to have to uh, multiply it by distance in the x, because this is force y. So distance in the x is 3 feet. Nice. So if you plug this all into your calculator, you're going to get a moment around a is equal to negative 70, or 768 pound feet. Nice. So this negative is telling us that we're rotating in the clockwise direction. Negative is clockwise, positive is counterclockwise. So there you go, got all three answers. So that's how you do this kind of problem. If you need more help with this, I have a lot of videos on this topic, so feel free to check out my playlist and subscribe to my channel. Uh, that would help me a lot. So see you guys in the next one, peace.